Hey everybody, Hugh here. Welcome back. Well, as you can see, there's been a bit of work going on around the courtyard here. Spring has arrived. Spring has sprung all of a sudden. We've been battling winds and storms and hailstones and rain. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, it's the perfect spring day. It really is. So uh, when we were sitting out earlier, having our cups of tea, some great discussions were beginning to take place around revamping the furniture. So Miss Judith has been very busy, as you can see. And uh, we've gone for a sage colour on top of the table and the backs of the chairs. So looking very nice. Now we know weather isn't going to stay like this. <laughs> so these chairs and table will be folded and put away. But you can see the, the effect where the air is about to start. For those of you that stop by just for a few minutes, you're very welcome along. Of course, do remember to like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up there if you wouldn't mind. And uh, for those that will stay on, we'll do a little bit of a deeper dive into what's going on because there is plenty. I was only writing in my blog this morning around the plant shuffle taking place and balancing the indoors and outdoors and hardening off some of the plants and some of the other plants then needing the warmer locations. A good example, I popped it outside there. Can you see the acer? So we've got a few of our acers. You might have spotted them indoors in some of the previous indoor videos over the past weeks, but we're beginning to harden them off. There's a beautiful red one, a couple of golden ones, a lovely green one that Judith refers to as her acer. So they're going to be looking very nice indeed. Meantime, the great switch of plants continues. I've referred to it over past weeks. We still have spring bulbs. You can see the tulips are going very nicely there and looking very well indeed. Any of the tulips that we planted here on site last autumn, we did in two layers, as I always recommend. And you can see the upper layer there is finished, but there is a lower layer that's actually come through. So the double layering of the bulbs works a treat, as you can see. The first layer is finished, but there's more coming through. So it prolongs the season of bulbs that we get. You can also see some of the alpines. Well, one of the alpines in particular is in full flight there, one of the arboreaceous. It's a variegated variety and a bumblebee is enjoying it. And well done people I got that last week, <laughs> Nick and Susie. That is a white kale or a white cabbage. We've had it over winter, bought in autumn time and it's now producing its flower seed. But isn't it stunning, isn't it? Just look at the white foliage on it there. It's like a, it's as good as a flower in itself. That combined with some of our crafts, as you can see, Mr. Sheep or Ms. Sheepy, depending. If it's he, she, or maybe they, sure who knows in this day and age. Looking very florally indeed. And another bit of our crafts there. And uh, leading to an overall very satisfying effect. Some of the bits and pieces of note that have developed since last week, apart from the obvious table and chairs that are there, is that we were dropping by garden centres. Very dangerous to do at this time of year. You can see some of the summer flowers, the geranium is out. Now of course these are spending their time mostly undercover, coming out on very nice days like this, but it's a bit early just for taking out the summer bedding, uh, apart from a little bit of sunshine on very calm days like we have here. What we are doing, and what we are busy shuffling plants about, it's back to where we were last week. The herbaceous plants, again taking them in during the the night when it's colder and we had two degrees celsius here last night like it was a grand frost so taking and putting them out during the day so anyone that does keep an eye on the shorts uh, that i do over the course of april th there's one a day you'll see there's sometimes gaps where the, the plants are just a little bit too soft even to put out during the day because the winds are so high but on the most part they're out during the day taken in at night we do that for a period of a week or so just to harden up the foliage and that helps them then, uh, once they're out, they're out. Unless we're going to get a very hard frost and then we can decide what we're going to do. That's a pulmonium. You can see it there, Jacob's Ladder. 
a smashing flower isn't it? the lovely blue the foliage is very soft that will actually develop into a more purple color as time goes on the azalea is still flowering behind as you can see and the color on the Pieris forest flame is looking very very nice the poor daffodils are going over and as I keep saying make sure you're feeding them uh, every week or every two weeks half strength of tomato food and uh, they'll come back very nicely you know but they do require that bit of feeding and um, the likes of the parrots the parrot tulips there just looking so well it's such a joy to spend time in among the plants especially especially joyful on, on a day like today but even on other days where things aren't so nice just to see the leaves unfurl them bursting bud the flowers emerging and then providing that color for us it really is really a special place to be at this time of year in the garden and i think everyone gets the garden garden itch they really do be careful about plants that you're buying if you're going to your garden centers you know do check gardens that are close around you to see what's growing and growing well unless you want to go just for a splurge just for the sake of buying some color and sure then all bets are off aren't they <laughs> you can see the solar pump is working away in the fountain lovely sunny day like today this is a north facing garden you wouldn't think it now it's basking in sun this evening but it is quite shaded up till about is it three or four o'clock but the plants really do just love the sunshine that's being presented to them of course we have the houses and the grow tones there the grow tone we're using mostly as the hothouse now with the tomatoes and then we have some seeds coming on in there as well and we're using two grow houses here as the I suppose a hardening off area I focus in there can you see the acers inside so the doors are open a lot during the days and we'll only close them as I say if we're getting that sort of frosty weather that's there because we really do want to harden up those plants so they can transition into the courtyard here which is then of course is freeing up space for other seedlings as they grow on to be potted on palms were out and have been out over the past week and the cold weather last night hasn't seemed to damage them there is a bit of a microclimate in here because it is a courtyard area that we've fashioned and i think there is a, a little bit of heat as the sun warms that concrete there under our feet you know so it does provide a little bit of warmth for plants that are sitting on top to avoid the worst of the courtyard the worst of the nighttime cold i'm just giving it a 360 nice and gently anyway it's a quick enough one this week rather than going into a lot of detail about plants it's more about just enjoying the moment isn't it just enjoying the moment it's not often we've gotten days like these in the past six months so i'm saying to one of my friends there we'll all be out with our lawn mowers now mowing like mad unless you're doing the no mow may that's a different piece i don't feel too guilty about mowing the small area around the greenhouse here the rest of it goes a little bit wild and that's okay anyway thanks as always for watching thank you for liking and subscribing and of course comments are always welcome do give the thumbs up if you can and of course look after yourselves until the next one all the best for now god bless Take care. Bye-bye.